Hello everybody and welcome to this edition of Grammar Tuesday where we're going to take a look at paragraphs and as always going to look at how to use this uh, area of grammar and then how writers use them in literature pieces. So that's the kind of theme I'm always looking to explore, not just how you should use the different topics but how they are used uh, by writers. So paragraphs, well a paragraph is a section in a piece of writing which deals with a particular point or idea. Now most of us tend to be guilty of writing a bit and then when it looks like we've written you know half a page or five or six lines you kind of think oh well I'll change paragraph now it looks a bit too long. But there are actually specific rules for using paragraphs. There are two different ways to show that you've started a new paragraph. Um, I wanted to make this as image heavy as possible so it looks a little bit interesting so I've got a big red circular 2 for no other reason other than I just wanted it to not be too boring. So let's look, take a look at an example uh, taken from The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins not to be mistaken by uh, with The Woman in Black by uh, Susan Hill. So here we have an example of what we would call indented paragraphs and you can see that each paragraph simply indents into the page a little bit. So here, here and here. Now this is uh, one way of writing or changing paragraph and you might be intrigued to spot that um, it's odd that the first paragraph of this chapter is indented but that's a feature of older writing and with both fiction and non-fiction writing today we don't tend to indent the first paragraph because you know obviously it's clear it's a new paragraph because it's the very first one. So you can indent for paragraphs. You can also block paragraphs where you just write with, uh, to change the paragraph, you put a, a blank line between. So the same piece from the woman in white would look like this. There's no indentation, as you can see. The lines don't indent into the page. They all start at the same uh, point, but we misalign completely when we want to change paragraph and you know that tends to be the one that most people use today um, you know certainly in schools and exams so which one should you do should you uh, block or should you indent well you know the kind of idea is that when you're typing you probably will block because it's a lot easier to just press enter twice rather than uh, to kind of find the tab button but when you're writing anything by hand with a pen it's better to indent and you probably haven't been doing that but particularly these days with the exam where you know the GCSE English exams give you uh, this sort of the paper um, space to write your answers in you don't want to be skipping lines every paragraph because you don't want to run out of space and of course you can get extra paper if you need it but um, also we want to save paper it doesn't grow on trees you know so you know we want to make sure that we're, we're being a sort of economic um, as we economical as we can and, and kind of make sure that uh, we indent when we're handwriting um, and it'll become clear why that's particularly useful when we talk in a second about uh, when you're writing dialogue but um, there are simple rules for um, when to change paragraph when to start a new paragraph most of you will know them as tip top um, made into uh, an amazing film with Isabel Huppert, my very favourite French actress. Who'd have thought there was a whole movie just about paragraphing? And the tip-top rule is what many people use. You can see it here that we change paragraph when we change time. For example, with the words tomorrow or later that day or at midnight. When we change place, at school, at home, in the park, in the village. When we change topic with any new theme that we add to our writing. And when we change person, and that's either when a new person is introduced or there's a change of the person speaking, we change paragraph there. So easy to remember, TPTP, we just call it tip top. Because um, the TI is the TI for time, the P for place, the TO for topic, and the P for person. So that's where we um, most often will change paragraph. Now, there's a common mistake though, if you see on this piece of writing on the screen here, this is uh, Hannah was passing a classroom when she saw her good friend Anna sitting alone with a strange expression on her face. Fearing the worst, Hannah charged into the room and confronted her friend. Anna, what's happened? Hannah asked. It's my boyfriend, Matt, Anna replied. He's ditched me for my best friend. Hey, wait a second, said Hannah. Aren't I your best friend? Not anymore, Anna said with a happy smile. She is. Now, in that piece of writing, 
there's something not quite right with that. So have a look at it. Can you work out what it is? If you have a look at that extract, what's the common error? Well, the common error, and many students do it, is that this is the perfect paragraph, but when it comes to speech, the uh, writer has begun a new line instead of a new paragraph, and the extract should follow the pattern of this, its second indented paragraph. It should be like this, because remember, every time there's a new speaker, you have to start a new paragraph, not just a new line. So now to topic sentences. Topic sentences are the first sentence of each paragraph. They introduce the theme of the paragraph, and then the rest of the paragraph develops that theme. So I'll show you an example from a piece of literature, The Count of Monte Cristo by Alessandro Dumas, where a young man called Franz faints after he witnesses an execution. And the theme of the topic sentence is what Franz notices when he recovers from his faint. And the rest of the paragraph develops the idea of what he sees and hears. Here's some, uh, a key for some of the words you might be unfamiliar with. Pallor is unhealthy, uh, pale skin. Assuming means putting on. A masquerade costume is a fancy dress worn as a disguise at a carnival or party. Uh, Montsitorio is a palace in Rome and decease is death. So if we have a look at this extract here. When Franz recovered his senses, he saw Albert drinking a glass of water, of which, to judge from his pallor, he stood in great need, and the Count, who was assuming his masquerade costume. He glanced mechanically towards the square. The scene was wholly changed. Scaffold, executioners, victims, all had disappeared. Only the people remained, full of noise and excitement. The bells of Montsitorio, which only sounds on the Pope's decease and the opening of the carnival, was ringing a joyous peal. Well, asked he of the Count, what has then happened? So, what do you think about that paragraph? Is there a bit that doesn't seem to be right? You might be wondering why Franz's questions to the Count, uh, why his question, sorry, is not in a new paragraph. And that's because the paragraph is about Franz and Franz is speaking. Therefore, we have to remember if it's the same person, it's the same paragraph. We don't change paragraph unless it's a new person, um, either speaking or being written about. So, fascinating fact, um, this uh, rules of paragraph have changed over time. Um, it published in 1749, the comic novel The History of Tom Jones, a foundling, by Henry Fielding, is believed to be one of the earliest English novels. And there's an extract about to come up where Jones, accompanied by his friend Partridge, is looking for Sophia, the love of his life. Now, although Fielding organises his ideas into paragraphs, the tip-top change of person speaking rule was more flexible in the early 18th century. And for this reason, conversations between two people were sometimes crammed into a single paragraph, as you can see on the screen. Now I'll give you a chance to pause and have a look at that if you like. But some of Fielding's dialogue paragraphs are over a page long, and the reader has to concentrate really hard on who says what. So it's really fortunate for us with this development of this rule, new speaker, new paragraph, because that makes it a lot easier for us to follow the conversation. So how can you use paragraphs for effect? Well, power paragraphs, which are simple sentences as a paragraph on their own to emphasize the strength of feelings, to stress a point or emphasize a strong emotion, a single simple sentence paragraph. Now, this is something we see in literature. The yellow wallpaper is a very famous text, uh, which I studied uh, last year with my year 10s. It's by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, and the narrator is suffering from a nervous depression. Her husband, a doctor, has instructed her to stay in the bedroom of a house they've rented for the summer. He orders her to rest, forbidding her to write in her diary, but defying him, she records her obsession with the colour and pattern of the wallpaper. She sees people moving in it and all sorts. And uh, here's the extract I want to look at. The front pattern does move, and no wonder the woman behind shakes it new paragraph. Sometimes I think there are a great many women behind and sometimes only one and she crawls around fast and her crawling shakes it all over. New paragraph. Then in the very bright spot she keeps still and in the very shady spot she just takes hold of the bars and shakes them hard. New paragraph. And she is all the time trying to climb through but nobody could climb through that pattern. It strangles so. I think that is why it has so many heads. New paragraph. They get through and then the pattern strangles them off and turns them upside down and makes their eyes white. 
New paragraph. If those heads were covered or taken off, it would not be half so bad. New paragraph. I think that woman gets out in the daytime. New paragraph. And I'll tell you why privately I've seen her. So the short paragraphs all the way through become even shorter as the narrator becomes more delusional. And the authors really carefully crafted the paragraph lengths to de deliberately emphasise the narrator's madness. Now obviously in an exam, you don't want the examiner to think you're mad. You don't want to use with really short paragraphs non-stop, but have one or two short paragraphs in your exam essay, and that'll contrast with your longer paragraphs and prove to the examiner that you can vary your writing. And it's little things like that that'll help you to improve your skills. So next we're gonna have a look at discourse markers. They're the connecting words and phrases that introduce paragraphs and sentences, and they add a nice fluency to your writing. I'm going to whisk through them on the screen and you can pause the video because we're getting quite long now. You can also get all of this that I've gone through in my Mr. Bruff's Guide to Grammar, which is available at uh, mrbruff.com and also on Amazon. But these are different um, connectors or discourse markers, sorry, which you can use in your writing. Remember, some of them um, are very easy to use. You just uh, put them at the beginning of your sentence, add a comma and finish your sentence. For example, on the whole, I love grammar. But others are conjunctive adverbs. Do you remember those from last week's video? And for those, the grammar is different. Remember, we saw, as in the use of the word however, that it has to have the semicolon and then the comma. So you've got to get the rules right if you're using them, but discourse markers are very useful. Well, as I said, all of this comes from Mr. Bruff's Guide to Grammar, which you can pick up for just £2.99 at mrbruff.com as an ebook. And do follow Mrs. Spag on Twitter, who tweets really useful things on grammar. Uh, almost every day. So uh, thanks for concentrating and see you next week.